Welcome to Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel means God with us. If you're looking for a place where you can explore real faith with real people, if you appreciate big church quality with a small church feel, if you want to partner with others who are committed to bringing real hope to a broken world, then we invite you to experience Emmanuel. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Emmanuel Online. It is so great to be back with you this week. And this week is our last big push for snow, snow camp. camp. Um, last fall, we had about 100 people sign mm -hmm. up for that. We've got more than 120 yeah. and signed up And it was really pre-snow camp, even though it was fall camp, because it was snowy. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> um, here are the dates once again. February 5th through 7th is for everybody. Everybody. Pre-teen track, middle school mm -hmm. track, all ages. And then the following weekend, the 12th and 14th, that is high school specific. You can sign up for both of those camps at emmanuel.church slash register. And before we move on from this, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for the teens for stepping up. We know that mm -hmm. it's going to be a little different with COVID, but it's also going to be great. So thanks for taking a chance for making it great because you're going to be there. I also want to say thanks to the parents. Normally we have a bus that we're able to bring up, but because of COVID, that's a wah, wah, wah. So <laughs> thank you for making this a priority because it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. And for all of you who are coming up for All Ages Camp, not only are you helping to build community for, for those of us who are going to be there, you're blessing Covenant Pines mm -hmm. by coming up and together we're gonna to be building something so that when the day comes, when all of us can be there together, we've we've established some really cool traditions yeah. that we can all be a part of. So for all those reasons more, thank you for coming. And I wanna to say to those of you who are gonna be online that week or in in-person services that week, please pray for us, especially for sure. the Saturday evenings around nine o'clock. Could you be praying specifically for the teen con uh, communion services that the Holy Spirit is gonna come and descend and really move in those hearts on those weekends. We would really, really, really appreciate that. For sure. Yeah. Well, in some new news, we have a new web page for you to check out. Our yeah. entire page, our entire website is getting reworked. That's not quite ready yet, but this is just a specific page within the website. And it is emmanuel.church slash membership, where you will find all things membership landing on that page. So if you're new to ECC and you're wondering what membership is about, how we do, what membership looks like at Emmanuel Covenant, um, you can check that out there and learn about our Explore membership class. If you are a current member and you need to renew your membership, because we do that every year for the reasons that'll be on that page. <laughs> um, if you want to renew your membership, you can do it there. Or if you want to attend um, virtually our member meeting that'll be coming up where we're going to be voting on lay leaders and voting on budget and all things annual meeting, you can get information there too. Again, that's emmanuel.church slash membership. Yeah, and if you're turning 18, guess That's what? That's right. You are now eligible to become a voting member. Yes. So go to that page and click that Explore Membership course. I'm really excited to see some of you there for, for that. You know, we couldn't do the things we do if, if it weren't for this partnership that, that, that we have together. So thank you to all of those who serve. Thanks for those of you who give. If you're new to this community and want to find out how to serve, go to manu.church. If uh, you want to find out how to give, you can go to manu.church slash give and it lists a number of ways to do that. So before we get started, let's dedicate ourselves. Let's dedicate our gifts um, as we start this, this brand new week. Let's pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel. Welcome to worship. Let's start off this morning by singing a hymn that dates back to the very earliest days of the church. It's called All Creatures of Our God and King. Here we go. One.
sing what a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to less. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, we come to celebrate your name, a name in which every knee will bow, a name in which there's power and beauty and wonder. Jesus Christ, be honored in these words, be honored even more in the lives that we live, shape us now and mold us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning again. So this week I was reading a book about writing and the author mentioned a category of books called Christian self-help. Let that sink in for a minute. There, there is a category of resources called Christian self-help. So I Googled this to see if this really was a thing. And when I Googled Christian self-help, I had 875 million links that came my way in just 0.67 seconds. <laughs> How did Christian self-help become a category? Isn't the very essence of Christianity the notion that we're putting our faith in Christ and not ourselves. Becoming a Christian, it's an acknowledgement that even on our best days, we sin and we fall short and we completely are dependent, we believe as Christians, on the work of the Holy Spirit bringing about the change in our lives. Well, speaking from personal experience and what I've observed over the last 52 years, people, we do better. We do better when we seek God's help. And, and we do better when we sincerely seek God's guidance. And I'm not just talking about some general God, lower G God that we make up. We do better when we place our faith and our trust and our hope in the God that the Bible describes. So <laughs> how many of you are honest, at least honest enough to admit that you could use some help as you're facing life's challenges? All right. I'd, I could lie and say, I see hands going up all over, but I would assume that hands are going up all over because we all need this, right? If we're honest, we need help beyond ourselves. And that's what this teaching series is about. This is a teaching series about fostering the kind of faith that Jesus of Nazareth had, the kind of faith that he passed along to his followers. Well, we've got a lot to cover this morning again, so let's get started. If you're taking notes, I invite you to write this down. The Acts Church, we've been looking at the Acts Church and their example. The Acts Church didn't place their faith in self-help. Let's quickly look back to a verse that we've looked at a couple times here in this series already. It is a verse that is central to understanding the Acts Church. This is Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 8. As we're turning here, I want to let you know if you're looking for a great uh, Bible tool, a Bible app, if you go to uversion.com. They've got a great free Bible app that millions, hundreds of millions actually of people have downloaded. It's free. It's great. Here we go. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 uh, says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria to the end of the earth. All right, if you haven't already, highlight that in your Bible, underline that in your Bible, highlight it and then underline it, memorize it. This isn't just an outline to the book of Acts, which it is, there's an invitation here to receive help from a helper who's got power beyond our own. All right, last week, when I was listening to examples of how the Holy Spirit empowered the Acts church, I asked, hey, could any of you use more of what they had. And it was great at one of our services, in-person service, I think it was the 11 o'clock, when I said, could you use more of what they had? Someone said, yes, all of it, all of it. Well, this week, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our attention to baptism. 
to baptism. Now, for some of you, this is going to be a helpful reminder. It's going to be one of those, yeah, it's been a while since I've really thought about baptism. Yes, this is so important. I, uh, I've partnered with a number of Catholics in the past, Catholic leaders. And I noticed something when I would visit their churches that many of their churches, they had when you walked in, there was a basin that had water in it. And I was, I was what is this all about? And they said, this was, so every time you come into the sanctuary, you could touch the waters and you could be reminded of your baptism. I thought, what a great thing to be reminded of our baptism regularly. So for some of you today, it's gonna be a long overdue touch the water moment. And I hope you find it meaningful. I hope it, it, it fires back up in you how important this is and to be celebrating with others when they're baptized and, and all those things. But for others of you, I realize, this is gonna be more of a head scratcher here. And for good reason. Of all the things, of all the things that we could be looking at in the Acts Church Masterclass bundle, why would we pick baptism? We've only got like five weeks or whatever of this series to be able to wrestle with these things. This is in our top five, baptism. And the reason you might be wondering about that, rightfully so, is you look around and you look at, okay, these people have been baptized, these people haven't been baptized, and I can't tell any noticeable difference in their lives. So why then would we take one of these weeks and put such a big emphasis on something that doesn't apparently make a difference in their lives? Hmm, of all the things we could highlight, why are we highlighting baptism? Let's dive in. I invite you to write this down. If the Acts Church prioritized baptism, why wouldn't we? Let's take a look at this. If you've been reading along uh, with us in the book of Acts, you have seen there are a lot of passages in Acts that mention baptism. For example, the very first Christian sermon ended with an invitation to repent and be what? Be baptized. After waiting for the Holy Spirit, as Jesus instructed, Peter gave his first recorded sermon to a stunned multinational crowd. In this sermon, Peter shared the gospel, which is the story of Jesus. And after offering a compelling case that Jesus was the Son of God, what did Peter do? He implicated that crowd in Jesus' death. This is where we pick up in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 38. Now then, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. After hearing Peter's message, they asked a wide open question. Did you see that? It was wide open. They, they said, okay, Peter, out of all of the possible things that we could do in this moment, what is most important for us to do right now? And what did Peter reply? He said, repent, which we'll talk about in a couple weeks, and be baptized. Peter was speaking at that time to a multinational Jewish audience. And as I was studying these texts this week, here's what one of the resources I looked at said about that. They said, because baptism was a sign of conversion to Judaism, normally reserved for pagans, Peter's demand would offend his Jewish hearers. He calls for a public radical testimony of conversion, not a private, non-committal request for salvation with no conditions. And as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about our times and how many times I've, I've, I've seen events where, where the person leading the event is calling for a point of decision when it comes to Christ. And what they'll do is they'll say, okay, now with every head bowed and every eye closed, those of you who want to commit to Jesus, would you, would you raise a hand? This is very different than that, isn't it? Very different than that. This was a radical call to respond to the story of Jesus with a whole life response. And that response included baptism into the name of Jesus Christ. In your notes, I included this. Baptism in the name of Jesus, that is a difference maker. In the book of Acts, baptisms aren't all the same. Let's take a look at this. Acts chapter 19, verses 2 through 6. And Jesus, oh no, and uh, Paul said to them, 
Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we haven't even heard there was a Holy Spirit. We looked at that last week. Let's continue on. And uh, Paul said, into what then were you baptized? They said, into John's baptism. And Paul said, oh, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one that would come after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. And then when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, began speaking in tongues, prophesying. All right, so are you catching this? These people had been baptized, but whose baptism did they have? They had John's baptism. And, and, and they were rebaptized into the name of Jesus. To be baptized in the name of Jesus is to acknowledge not just in a general way that you're a God follower. It is to, that you believe that Jesus was the Messiah that the scriptures testified to. And you're converting to his way. Or if you're baptizing an infant, what you're gonna model is, and what you're gonna teach is the way of Jesus. Okay, here's another thing you're gonna come across if you study baptism in the Acts church. You're gonna find, speaking of kids, that households were transformed transformed. In the book of Acts, there's several examples where entire households were baptized at the same time. In that first sermon that Peter gave, Peter included these words. He said, repent and be baptized into the name of Jesus and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is for you and your children, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Okay, does that mean then that everybody should baptize their infants or young children? All right, what we are doing, actually today, Sam and I are gonna do this. As soon as we're done filming this, we're gonna film two more videos specifically for parents. Because we believe as you go to the scriptures, you can make a strong case for baptizing your children and then having them later, actually you're baptizing with the hope faith-fueled hope that they're going to make a decision to confirm their faith later. You can make a strong case for that. You can also make a very, very strong case that instead you, you should bring your children for Jesus to bless them, a dedication with the faith-fueled expectation that later they will choose to be baptized. You can make a strong biblical case for both of these, and we're going to create two videos that can show you the biblical case for both, for both. What I want to do right now, what I want to do right now is to show how the Acts Church was experiencing something, right? I guess I won't show it. I just want to point out that the Acts Church was experiencing something that was transforming entire families. So why would we not want to recapture more of that? If this is something that can transform an entire family, why would we not want to prioritize this? All right, so now what I've given you here is just a start. It's just a start. Look at all these other references to water baptism. And these are just the ones that I, I caught. There might even be more. If you're, if, these are references to baptism in chapters 1, 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 18, and 22. If you're taking notes, I invite you to write this down because what we've just given you so far is the, just the book of Acts. Consider this. In Scripture, baptism is linked to some pretty amazing things. When we now go outside the book of Acts to the whole of scripture, as, as we see what people were beginning to write down as they began to reflect more deeply on baptism, as the Holy Spirit opened their eyes and their hearts and their minds to what God was doing, here's a sampling, not an exhaustive list, a sampling of the connections that they made in the pages of scripture. Water baptism is connected to God's covenant promises, inward cleansing and washing away of sin, union with Christ, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and becoming part of the church. In the Bible, baptism is a really, really, really big deal. There's a place to write this in your notes too. One baptism is highlighted alongside one Lord and one faith as a defining mark of Christ's church. And that brings us full circle to where we started. If you're looking at baptism through a Christian self-help lens, you're going to see examples, lots of them, of people who were baptized and it wasn't all that helpful. They were baptized, but baptism alone didn't make much of a difference in their life. And that's the point. Baptism alone isn't baptism. It's not. That's a problem right there. Baptism was never meant to be a stand-alone thing. 
as I was, as I was preparing for last week's teaching on the Holy Spirit, I came across this quote, love it. If we emphasize the word without the spirit, we dry up. If we emphasize, emphasize the spirit without the word, we blow up. If we hold the word and the spirit together, we grow up. Baptism alone isn't baptism. There is a context through which the new self is reborn by water and by the word and by so much more. Here's what we see happening in the book of Acts, this bigger picture. As the gospel of Jesus Christ is proclaimed, hearts and minds are opened by the Holy Spirit. People are drawn to the one true God who so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And, and as this happens, people then move. They move from curiosity to belief. They convert to this new way, the way of Jesus. And they're baptized into a community of believers. They participate in a sacred moment during baptism where, where their church family gathers around them to pray and to celebrate this sign that God is at work in their lives and it is God who has drawn them to these waters and is cleansing them and washing away their sin and uniting them with Christ, filling them with the Holy Spirit. And they're welcomed by that church family who then regularly gather with them to encourage and support and challenge each other. They explore God's word together. They observe the sacraments together. They join their voices in worship together. And they reach out to a lost and hurting world together. Okay, that's the context. As we read through Acts, that is the context in which a new self is born and reborn, I should say, and grows and matures. That's that's the bigger piece, bigger picture of what baptism is a part of. So that's why baptism alone doesn't work. That's why if you just listen to podcasts alone, that doesn't work. If you just are listening to worship music alone, that doesn't work. All right, before we bring our time together as a close, I got a question for you and an invitation. Here's the question. What if, what if we approach baptism like the Acts Church did? The sad reality is most people don't. Most people don't experience baptism in the context that I described earlier. What I have seen this, <laughs> what I have seen, and I've seen this a lot, is when people talk about baptism, so often they focus on things that the Bible doesn't even address. Sam, can I get an amen to that? It, amen. It, this is what happens a lot of times. Okay, so for example, how much water should we use? Bible doesn't say. How, how old should a person be? Bible doesn't say. How much training should a candidate for baptism have? The Bible doesn't say. And yet, what do people argue about so much? How much water? How old should be a person? How old should they be? How much training should they have? Churches divide over issues like this. And these are questions that I don't see the Bible devoting any teaching to. What we do see in the Acts Church is a community of people who are under extreme duress from an occupying Roman Empire and powerful religious leaders. Today we talk about canceling people. What did they do? They didn't just cancel people, they crucified people. And what we see in the book of Acts, what we see in the Acts Church, is people who were empowered to fulfill the Great Commission even in headwinds like that. These are among Jesus' last recorded words. And Jesus came to them and he said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always even to the end of the age. Why did the Acts Church prioritize baptism? Because Jesus did. Jesus did. And that's why we prioritize baptism too. I mentioned we had an invitation to you. Here it is. If you or your household have never been baptized, let's set a date or let's have a conversation. Just go to manual.church slash next there's a connection card. You can fill it out. Let us know how we can help you. Help you set a date or help you set a date for a conversation. 
in the age of COVID, it might take some creativity in terms of how we can do all this. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. What we don't want to do, what we don't want to do is continue to put something off that we see the church in Acts doing right away. If you're a parent, we're going to get those videos posted as soon as we can. And what those videos will do is they'll, they'll lay out at least a, a basic um, f- understanding or framework from which you can, you can discern if, if you're on the fence uh, uh, or not sure, you can discern which direction to take. Infant baptism, infant dedication, right? But then when you make that decision, let's set a date to have your child either baptized or dedicated. In Acts 2, about 3,000 people received the word that Peter brought. They were baptized when? They were baptized that day. And maybe there was a moment this year where you were, you were listening to one of these messages or another message and, and the Holy Spirit prompted you to say, okay, God, I am in. I am in. I want to follow in the way of Jesus. If so, let's set a date. Well, let's have a conversation about getting you baptized. In Acts 8, an influential Ethiopian who had been seeking God, who had traveled to Jerusalem to worship in the temple, who was trying to understand the scriptures, he finally had things click when he had a conversation with a man named Philip. And he was baptized when? He was baptized that day. Maybe you had a moment like that. Maybe you had a moment when things clicked. If so, let's set a date or let's have a conversation. In Acts 9, a Pharisee named Saul who had been trying to destroy the church. He had a conversation with Christ, that cha- or a, 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 an encounter with Christ that changed his life. His eyes were open, his life was changed, and he was baptized when? He was baptized that day. The day his eyes were open. Well, maybe you've been heading down a destructive path. Maybe you've been hurting yourself. Maybe you've been hurting others. And you realize, I need to be born again. If that's you, let's set. Let's set a date. Let's have a conversation. In Acts 10, we're introduced to a Roman centurion. He's a good man. He is a successful man. He is an influential man. He revered God. He gave generously to the poor, but he was missing something. And when God gave him a vision that there was more, he gathered his friends, he gathered his relatives, he gathered his family to hear the word of God. And the spirit fell on them all, all of them. They were all baptized that day. Maybe you're a person of influence like that. Maybe you've got a vision of gathering your friends and your family to hear about Jesus. If so, let's have a conversation. Let's set a date. A businesswoman named Lydia appears in Acts 16. She's a worshiper of God. She didn't know Jesus until a former Pharisee, <laughs> until a former Pharisee formerly named Saul shared the gospel with her. And she and her household were baptized. Maybe that, maybe that's you. Maybe that's your story. Maybe you believed in God in a general way for a long time, but now you know Jesus and you want to be baptized into Jesus' name. If so, let's set a date. Let's have a conversation. One more. In Acts 16, we also hear another story, a story of a jailer. When the foundations of his jail were shaken, the only thing more miraculous than the prison doors springing open and the shackles coming loose from the prisoners on their own was the fact that the prisoners ended up caring more about the jailer than they did about escaping, than they did about extracting revenge. And this jailer was blown away. He was blown away by the miracle. He was blown away by these people. And he was baptized that day when he realized there was a powerful God who cared about him and there were people who knew this God. Maybe that's you. Maybe you have had some sort of encounter that you can't explain and you want to learn from the people who seem to know this God. If that's you, let's set a date. Let's have a conversation. You can search the Bible cover to cover. You can search the Bible cover to cover for explicit instructions on how much water to use, what age is the right age, how much instruction a person needs. You're not going to find those things. I've looked. What you will find are stories of people whose lives were transformed and baptism was part of their story. It can be part of yours. Let's set a date. Let's have a conversation. Amen. Well, I searched the world, but it couldn't feel me. Man's empty prayers, treasures that fade. 
never enough You came along You put me back together And every desire is now satisfied
Thank you so much for joining us for Emmanuel Covenant Church Online. We're so glad that you worshiped with us this morning and that you're a part of our ECC family. If you're new to Emmanuel, just go to emmanuel.church slash next and fill out our virtual connect card. There you can get more information about what's coming up at ECC, submit any prayer requests, or get connected with a small church. And now go this morning with this blessing. May the waters of God's grace surround you and uphold you. May your baptisms strengthen you for the work ahead. And may the spirit that descended upon Jesus at his baptism fall upon your shoulders as you seek to do God's will. Amen. Have a great Sunday. Sam eats SpaghettiOs out of the can. Why is that? What's that now, Bobo? It's a distraction. Okay. Squirrel. <laughs>